My day job has been moving to a new premises this month, resulting in a complete lack of spare time and energy for me. I knew I wouldn't have time to complete a proper project, so instead I decided to pour every last minute of my spare time into preparing the Zendeck files so I can finally open source them for you guys. Before we get to that though, I also wanted to give SteamOS a proper try now that it's officially been released, so let's start with that. The process is simple, just navigate to this page and download the OS image from this link. Then just use the Rufus tool to flash this image onto a USB drive and you'll have a bootable USB ready to go for installing SteamOS. I don't want to lose my Windows installation just yet, so before I do anything to the Zendeck, I'm going to swap in a spare SSD so I don't have to worry about overriding anything. With that out of the way, let's get the installation going. I've got a keyboard connected to the second USB port so I can hit delete and enter the BIOS and force it to boot from the USB drive. The installation all went smoothly, but almost immediately, I ran into the same problem I had with Bazite OS when I tried it a year ago. If I even so much as bump the touchscreen by mistake, the whole system crashes and restarts and that just isn't going to cut it for me. If I give up now though, I know how upset the Linux enthusiast will be, so I'll give Bazite another chance to impress me. The process for Bazite is exactly the same as SteamOS, just download the image from their website, flash it onto a USB, and then boot from the USB and follow the steps for installation. The installation is pretty much the same, but this time the touchscreen is working perfectly. As far as I can tell, the only thing that's missing is support for the UPS battery system. I was able to add in a small file into this folder, which then allows Linux to detect our battery. The only problem is, while it now shows up in the system tray in desktop mode, it is sadly still missing from within the gaming mode, meaning it's not much use to us right now. I've reached out on the Bazite Discord group asking if anyone knows how to get the OS to display this type of battery from within game mode, but so far I haven't had any useful responses. If you think you know how to solve this problem, please let me know in the comments or jump on my Discord channel and offer your expertise because I'd really like to get this working. I tried a quick bit of gaming with one of my recent Steam sale purchases, the Crash Insane Trilogy, and it looks like I'm getting around the 50 FPS mark in this level at native resolution and the low defaults, which is actually a bit better than I managed in the same level and settings in Windows, so I'm otherwise quite impressed. If I can get this battery monitor situation sorted, I might just stick with Bazite OS this time. Now, before we get onto the files, we need to thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay sponsored this entire project and provided all of the PCBs and even some nice nylon SLA prints, so make sure you check them out at the link in the video description the next time you need one of the many services they offer. Now, on to the part I know you've all been waiting for, the files. All of the files you'll need for the housing and controller PCBs are up on GitHub, along with a bill of materials for all the parts you'll need to purchase. I've provided STEP and STL files for the entire design, as well as a full assembly in STEP format, so you can look at how everything fits together. The software for the two controller PCBs are there along with the trackpad controller, so you should have everything you need to get started. I've split the power management board out into its own GitHub page because it's complex enough to be considered a project on its own. If you want to build a Zendeck for yourself, I strongly recommend you start with the power management system before you buy any of the other parts as it is a challenging build and you won't be able to complete the project without it. This is the latest version of my BMS design, so all of the issues I had with it in the earlier videos have been fixed, but there's still a few little lingering issues that I haven't been able to sort out that you should watch out for. The first one is the charging speed. One of the biggest problems I had with this project was getting the BMS to charge at the correct speed over the USB-C port. I did have it working when I completed the previous video, but shortly afterwards it stopped fast charging again and dropped back to the painfully slow 15 watt charging that it had been doing all along. Despite my best efforts, I haven't been able to pinpoint a reason for why this is happening, although I did find a small problem with one of the filled areas on the PCB which I have fixed on the version that is up on GitHub. It's not a software issue because the secondary charger port charges at the correct speed consistently, and they are both controlled by the same area in the software. And since its hardware is basically identical, I suspect the issues I'm getting now are simply either an assembly issue or a faulty bit of hardware. The only other issue I've had is that sometimes the BMS just doesn't show up in Windows. This one has got to be a software problem, but I haven't been able to work out why it happens yet. When it does happen, a quick restart of the system always seems to solve the problem, so in my eyes, it's only a minor issue. 
Hopefully, by open sourcing the design and having some new eyes look it over, we might be able to solve these final few little quirks. I've included all of the KiCad project files for the BMS along with the gerbers for the current version of the design, so you can easily have the boards manufactured if you don't already have KiCad installed. I haven't had a chance to write out a neat bill of materials for the BMS yet, but for the time being the information can be extracted from the KiCad project files and I will endeavour to get the bill of materials finished off as soon as possible to make it as easy as I can for you guys. Sorry it was only a short one this time. I'm keen to get back into my plan projects now though, so stay tuned for the next one. See you all next time.